Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Raspberry Pi case that basically turns your Pi into a mini desktop PC. This is known as the Desk Pi Lite and I really love the look of this thing. It's been a bit stagnant when it comes to Raspberry Pi cases or even accessories lately due to supply chain issues, but we've got a new case here that actually looks very promising. So on the channel, I've done a review of the DeskPi and the DeskPi Pro, but what we have here is the light version. It comes in a lot smaller. We don't have as much I.O., like we can't add a 2.5-inch drive inside of the case itself or an M.2, but overall, I do like the design of this. It's constructed of plastic, and it's very minimalistic, but what this does is add two full-size HDMI ports, plus two more USBs on the front, plus we'll still have access to our GPIO pins over here on this side. Comes with a heatsink and a PWM controllable fan, and this is really easy to assemble. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and pull the bottom off. We've got all of the accessories inside of the case itself. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a small screwdriver, and that's the only tool you'll need. So we've got the bottom half of the case off, and as you can see, there are some mounting holes here, so you can mount it on the back of your monitor or on a wall. And here's the daughter board. So this is going to plug directly into the power and the HDMI ports on the Pi. We've got two more USB 2.0 ports up front. We've got our USB Type-C power in and two full-size HDMI ports. We also get a bunch of thermal pads here for the included cooler slash fan. And this plugs directly into the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. It is PWM controllable or we can set it to be on all the time. Really easy to install. And as you can see, we do have those GPIO pins coming out of the side here. And we have a spot on the case where we can access this once it's all assembled. And just taking a look at the aluminum here, I guarantee you we're not going to have any trouble with cooling on this, even overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz. So to assemble the case, it's really easy. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab the cooler and the thermal pads. I would suggest using the thermal pads because this will cool the CPU, RAM, and Ethernet chip on the Pi. And with all of those chips, they're kind of sitting at a different level, so thermal paste really isn't going to work too well unless you just want to cool that RAM chip and the CPU itself. You can go ahead and use thermal paste then. But remember, when using these pads, it does have a clear plastic backing on the top and bottom, so make sure you get both of those off. So now that I have the thermal pads on, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 4. It's going to line right up. If I can get it here, we'll just make sure it's down and secure. And there's two screws that actually hold this to the Pi, but once it's in here, you should be good to go. I'm going to install those screws after I get the daughter board installed, just to make sure I don't have any issues. So we're going to grab that daughter board and we're going to plug it right in. It's going to line right up with the headphone jack, the two micro HDMI ports, and the USB Type-C port. And this way, it's going to feed everything over to the daughter board itself, so we now have full-size HDMI over here. So when it comes to the built-in fan, this will work just like the official Raspberry Pi fan. You can enable it from Raspberry Pi Config, but since I always overclock my unit, I want this to be on all the time because it's actually really quiet. There's a little switch, D and E. D is going to be always on, and when it's switched to E, you can use the built-in Raspberry Pi OS fan controls for this fan. So now that we have all that set up, we're going to install the two screws for the heatsink itself. You'll be able to see where these screws go because there's threads on the aluminum heatsink. Before putting the Pi and the daughter board into the case, make sure you put the clear plastic LED reflector in. I actually forgot to do this and had to go back and redo it. But now that we have the daughter board and the heat sink installed on the Raspberry Pi 4, we're just going to go ahead and line it up in the top half of the case. And what I do is just line up the HDMI and Ethernet port in the back, and it sits right in here very nicely. We're going to grab the bottom half of the case. I didn't even remove the screws here. Everything lines up, and we're just going to fasten this right down. And once it's finished up, it's going to look something like this. I really love this design. On the front here, we have our backlit power button and two USB 2.0 ports. Now, these 2.0 ports won't work until you add this to the config.txt. It doesn't matter what operating system you're running. As long as you have a config.txt on your SD card and you put this at the very bottom, you'll have two more USB 2.0 ports on this unit. Taking a look around back, we have our USB Type-C power in, two full-size HDMI ports, we still have access to that 3.5mm audio jack, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and our Ethernet jack. And we can easily access the micro SD card at any time from this slot at the bottom. And over here on the right-hand side, we have this little rubber grommet. You can pull this off and have access to those GPIO pins. 
So yeah, I actually think this looks really good. We've got our little LED indicators fully visible. The power button goes red when power's off, blue when power's on. And I actually think it looks really good here sitting on my desk. So the first SD card I installed, I didn't realize I had Android installed on it. But as you can see, it will work with these HDMI ports. Nothing we need to do there. Like I mentioned, you will have to enable those front USB ports. And you can set it up for the fan to be on all the time if you want. So the built-in fan is super quiet. Mine's on all the time. I'm overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz, but you know, it's going to function just like any other case or any other enclosure for your Raspberry Pi. One thing that I'm interested in is the cooling efficiency of this built-in cooler and fan. So what I'm going to do here is run an application called Stressberry. What it's going to do is max out all four cores on this unit, and since I'm overclocked, it's going to put out a lot more heat than it usually does. It's going to do that for 10 minutes. It'll automatically create a graph. Then we can see how well the cooling system in the Desk Pi Lite really works with the Raspberry Pi 4. And since I'm overclocked, we're going to get a lot more heat. If it works overclocked, it's going to work just fine with no overclock at all or the stock clocks. But after a little testing, it's actually looking pretty good. Now remember, my fan is on full time. We're overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz on a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. The Ice Tower Cooler, which is one of the best coolers for the Raspberry Pi, if not the best cooler. 44 degrees Celsius at 10 minutes. No cooler, 81 degrees Celsius, which is the thermal throttle limit I have it set at right now. In 4 minutes, it starts thermal throttling with no cooler. And with the Desk Pi Lite's built-in cooler, only 66 degrees Celsius. So we're not anywhere near thermal throttling with this. And overclocking and letting this thing run is going to be just fine. I can't even hear it sitting about two feet from the unit. If I put my ear up to it, I can hear it. But you can always set this up so it only comes on at a certain temperature. But I personally like having it on full blast. So overall, I do think this is a nice little desktop style case for the Raspberry Pi. We do have some functionality built in with those full size HDMI ports and extra USB ports, built in power button, easy access to the SD card and GPIO pins. As we saw with the 10 minute stress test, the built in cooler is just fine, even with an overclock on the Raspberry Pi 4. I would love to see at least an M.2 slot on something like this, but it would have brought the price up. Right now, this is sitting at $29.99. You get that cooler, built-in fan, extra USB, full-size HDMI, and we have access to those USB 3.0 ports on the rear, so you can always plug in like a USB SSD. Personally, I use something that looks like this. It's a one terabyte SSD inside of a little enclosure that kind of looks like a cassette tape. And it does work out quite well, whether you want to boot your operating system from it or just use it as external storage. It's really up to you. But I do like the look of the new Desk Pi Lite. It definitely gives it that tiny desktop PC feel when it's sitting right next to your monitor. So if you're interested in picking one up, I'll leave a couple links in the description. And if you got any questions about this thing, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.